Growing up in the streets of London, I've seen some pretty dark things. From stories of drug abuse and sexual violence to gang culture and suicide. Most of these issues remain a taboo within the Muslim community. But I want to explore these issues, how they affect Muslims and what we can do to change them. In 2015, it was recorded that within the UK there were 6,639 deaths due to suicide. And within the last decade, female rates are at its highest when it comes to suicide. And in the US, approximately 45,000 people every year die as a result of suicide. In fact, it's the 10th leading killer within the US. So we want to find out. What makes someone suffer from suicidal thoughts and tendencies? How does it develop from a state of depression to actually wanting to take your life? And at the same time as that, how can we help people suffering from suicide and also alleviate them of the stigma that surrounds suicide in itself? So we're in the car en route to meet uh, our first interviewee. This is a sister who actively has suicidal thoughts on a regular basis. She suffered from depression and anxiety for many years and has now transformed and developed into something whereby she feels that she actually wants to take her life. So hopefully we're gonna find out um, more about the issue of suicide, what leads people to that depressive state whereby they actually feel to take their life. And at the same time as that, hopefully through these conversations and open dialogue, we can actually learn how we can help people who suffer from suicidal tendencies. age and I'm talking about primary school and that's only something that I sort of identified recently that hang on I spent so much time in primary school being feeling so low and being so down you know I was bullied I ended up changing schools and even changing schools I was still feeling really really down then but I couldn't pinpoint on what it was um, I always just thought that I was a loner and, and people didn't really want to hang out with me and that always put me in a really sort of down bad mood um, moving on to high school as well, that's when I knew things were really you know, serious, things were really starting to, like, things weren't adding up, I thought okay this must be something but I didn't know what it was, I couldn't quite pinpoint it, I couldn't identify it because at that time I didn't know mental health was you know, an actual thing got to a point where I just didn't want to be here, I didn't want to be around. In year nine I went through uh, a small period of self-harm, just, just exper for ex experimental reasons, but um, as I went on to my GCSEs and then uh, my health wasn't that great as well, so that really just put me in a mind frame where I just did not want to be alive. That, that literally got me to, to that point to feel pain because I just couldn't feel anything and I just thought inflicting pain on myself that might sort of I don't know, maybe change my feelings a bit or maybe help me in some sense. Um, but it, it was mainly because I just wanted to feel something. I know that previous to us speaking, you mentioned to my producer that when it got to a stage that you felt like you actually didn't want to live anymore, that you checked yourself into a hospital, I believe. So I suppose my question is, have you actually ever acted upon those thoughts or ever actually started almost the process of preparing for acting upon those thoughts and taking it that next step whereby you're feeling I'm actually going to take my life? I haven't actually done anything, I haven't attempted, but I've had a plan for a very long time um, and a couple of months ago it got to a point where I was ready to do it uh, but I was with a friend and I just said please take me to the hospital, I'd spoken to Samaritans first and I was having a breakdown in the middle of the street um, and I checked myself into hospital and I just, I just remember I couldn't stop crying because I could not believe that I had reached that point. I never did, never did I think that I would actually get to that point where I just wanted to finish. But the only thing that held me back was the fact that I was a Muslim and that it's forbidden for me to, to actually act upon it. Despite having my plan in place, despite having everything ready, despite having self-harmed, I thought the best thing I needed to do was check into hospital, which is the last resort, and, and I did it. 
reached that breaking point, I thought, oh, you know, the reason why I'm here is because I have no Iman, I have no faith, um, you know, God is disappointed with me, you know, the devil's really got into my head. And this is also on the basis of what other people were saying, you know, you've really let the devil get into your head, he's, he's giving you all these thoughts. But I, then I thought that if I haven't actually gone ahead with it and I haven't killed myself, then that must mean that I still have an element of my faith left in order for me not to do it. Um, you know, I, I still, I still, I definitely believe in God. You know, the, the reason why I'm here is because of him. And I'm grateful to be alive every single day. Um, and, you know, I still do my prayers and I may not feel that connection as I used to have felt before, but the very fact that I'm still doing it and the very fact that I'm still here really does mean something. So I try to... Speaking to the sister was both heartbreaking and eye-opening. She was obviously suffering incredibly and yet had the immense courage to be able to speak about it so openly. It was apparent to me that Lack of faith was not the issue here. Rather, she was suffering as if she was fighting an illness. I went to meet up with a brother who asked to remain anonymous. This is a brother who, at one point of his life, actually did try to commit suicide. Tried to commit suicide on maybe four or three occasions. Uh, one was through overdose. So I went to the shop, just bought a load of paracetamol. Um, I sort of googled how many paracetamols it takes to uh, die. And um, that's what I did. Um, I ingested maybe a bit less than what was required. I think halfway through doing it, I realized that oh, this is ridiculous. Like uh, I could actually die and uh, that's when I stopped and that's when I sort of felt a bit silly but then what happens is a few days pass and then those negative feelings build up and suddenly you get the quote-unquote motivation to kill yourself again and so you try again uh, another time I tried carbon monoxide poisoning I closed all the windows any basic supply of air in my in my flat where I was um, living when I was studying. I bought loads of shisha coals and laid them out on the floor and uh, lit them up. Um, so I put them in the oven until they were letting, emitting gas and I just left it there and I just lay in bed waiting for it to take me and I was probably the closest to dying then because I got to the stage where I had a severe headache um, and just like about to pass out and I don't know what it was but I just remembered that I have work and um, I just stopped what I do, did put water or I can't remember what I did and just ran to work um, I tried to um, uh, cut my wrist with a knife um, I didn't get that far when did you first realise you were experiencing problematic thoughts or that you were going through a form of depression? Today it was maybe nine or ten years ago that I first felt sad. Everyone gets sad, but prolonged sadness, I suppose. Uh, I did some research and I said, and the research basically said if you're feeling sad for more than two weeks, you're depressed. Basically. Were you then always um, searching for God uh, within that period though? I mean, how did you come to Islam? Because I know you mentioned off camera, there was a period where you were agnostic. The idea of a God and believing in God. Um, being brought up as a Hindu, you, you listen to a lot of stories about God um, doing really good things, really moral things, and it's like a, like a feel-good type of thing, and um, I, I subscribe to that. That's fascinating to hear your journey towards faith. Do you think then faith helped you in coping with your mental illness? It definitely helped me. Uh, added perspective and context to life and death and the why of things. Uh, why are we here? What are we supposed to do? Uh, why do bad things happen? Sight. My depression was caused by nothing uh, extraordinary that happened in my life. I lived a normal life. I was, you know, I have amazing parents, I have amazing family, I had an amazing upbringing. 
um, I wasn't disadvantaged in any way. It was just my lack of being able to cope with everyday things, which was Islam sort of contextualized that. You know, why we go through hardships, what's the purpose of hardship, why God puts us through hardships. But of God has helped me. Uh, for example, the Quran says, we don't give anyone a burden greater than they can bear. So I know that whatever is, whatever curveball is thrown at me in life, God's given me that because he knows I can deal with it. And the reason why he's given me that is because it's to make me a better person. Cured because nothing goes wrong in my life anymore. I'm cured because I have developed a way of coping. My first thoughts and questions are that how an ordinary guy like him could go through such a dark time and how brothers and sisters like us could pass him on the street and have no idea. And secondly, how desperate he must have been and how lonely and how fearful he must have felt that he needed to actually take his life and carry out his planning and thought process to the extent that he implemented it and actually went through with it. Just, it blew me away. In light of hearing that faith gave him some respite, gave him coping mechanisms, gave him hope. I want to find out, what are the mosques doing? What do we propose as a faith group we should do in tackling this issue? And so I tracked down Sheikh Mizbahi in Collindale to find out more about how he proposes we should deal with the issue of suicide in the community. What is the actual stance within Islam upon suicide? From a, a fiqh point of view, from a law stance, and in regards to the, the punitive measurements, to, you know, the punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sanctified the human body. Allah has sanctified the social community. Religion does not want to highlight uh, the ills of the community, the religion wants to encourage the goodness within the community. It doesn't mean it will not address it. It is the mind that needs to be invited, invited into dialogue. Because at the end of the day, the person who has committed suicide must have been surely affected psychologically, sociologically, economically, or he may have suffered from anxiety and distress to a level that culminated where this person lost all hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to uh, clearly uh, understand that the Lord has commanded us, La yukallifullah. Nafsan illa wasaha. Allah has not bestowed any difficulty and trial upon anyone's back that he cannot tolerate. So as a matter of principle, obviously a lot of Muslim brothers and sisters do understand that at the back of the mind. It all seems very, almost uh, very romantic in a way because speaking to you you would think that okay so we're really addressing and we're really tackling the issue and we as muslims are hitting this head on but then why is there such a stigma still why is it such a taboo issue why is it that many people don't feel as if they can approach their local mosque community or imam when it comes to this i think Addressing, you know, suicide tendencies, you go to the NHS for instance and if there is any words uttered that reflect suicide tendencies, that's flagged up. But in our families we don't have that flagging. We're not trained to flag those things. We don't know how to flag those things. Those who are traditional actually are absolutely opposite. When they realize through the thing, they will sit down, have tea and coffee and, you know, say, and, and make an excuse in which, you know, that education is available for you. So it happened traditionally, but because the community of people that came over here, their priorities were very different, they did not focus towards this, or they were so badly used for five times so long that they didn't have energy left to progress in the social well-being of the community. So we're now at a stage that we desperately, definitely need offices with uh, educated people and 
They can be westernly educated person, it's absolutely fine because the methodology of, of uh, advice is very, very sound. It's to positively, uh, give them positive enforcement. It would, do, it would be good um, for them to know the Islamic viewpoint and to know the theological Islamic points as well, um, rather than use the hadith of you know, giving them um, you know, the punishable offensive, um, use the verses that encourage and develop their personality and give them self-confidence. Tomorrow, if a brother or sister um, came into the mosque and said to you, you know, as a Muslim, I'm suffering from suicidal tendencies, what would you advise them? First and foremost, I would need to um, obligate myself according to the law of the land to take note and flag the fact that this person has that tendency uh, because Allah knows best what uh, a person has to follow that up as well because there is a real chance of this person um, suffering from depression, etc. First and foremost, we would repeat that uh, we are, you know, Allah has sanctified your body and uh, tell me why you would want to do that to yourself and uh, ask the reasonable question what has led you to think this way because empowerment is the best thing uh, they come at a time when they have lost all power and control of their thoughts and uh, reversing that is the most important thing where you give them the empowerment of uh, you know structured thought and that's what they need at that time. So having spoken to the Sheikh, it's given me some hope because at least I now know there are some scholars trying to tackle the issue of suicide within the community. And at the same time as that, he's doing so in a very progressive manner. So at least I'm happy that he's managed to put to bed some of my concerns and questions in regards to the issue of suicide. But having spoken to a brother and a sister in regards to their struggles with suicide, I know it's a deeply psychological issue. And for that reason, I now want to speak to a mental health expert about how they approach the issue of suicide within the community. Clearly, suicide is one of the leading causes of death in human beings. There are about 900,000 cases every year and that is across different countries. The global rate of, of suicide, or the prevalence of suicide globally, is more or less similar. It's about one person committing suicide in every 100,000 of the population. Within the Muslim community, whether in the UK or other countries, there have been a number of studies over the years. And interestingly, some of the studies found that the rate of suicide was actually the same, more or less the same, not I mean, clinically significant apart from some studies in some countries where they found some higher rates of suicide in certain groups, for example, women. I mean, globally, the rate of suicide, the risk of suicide is higher in men compared to women. Women tend to harm themselves more often than men. If the scale of the problem is so great, and yeah. there are these studies which indicate that Muslims, like any other group uh, of human beings, are affected in the same manner, mm -hmm. Why is it still such a stigma within our community? There is a big stigma, sadly, about suicide and about mental health conditions in general. More profoundly in the Muslim community and more profoundly in developing countries. It's probably less profound in, in Western and developed countries, uh, which is something that's, that's reassuring. I've been approached by community centers where, uh, where I live to d give speeches and talks about so is, mental health issues. So yeah. there is uh, active engagement then, is, it yeah, seems, yeah. from yeah. Muslim communities in trying to address the issue. Yes. Um, because as I say, uh, it seems though it's still a stigma, so maybe we're still in our early stages, if you like, of uh, tackling and having this new approach. So then, when somebody does uh, approach uh, an individual, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, a colleague, yeah. How would you advise that person to engage with the person if they are suffering from suicidal tendencies? And how would you advise them to help that person or that individual, whether it be with words or with action? We face people that, you know, having suicidal thoughts or maybe suicidal attempts on a regular basis as part of our profession. But if you have someone in your family or a friend or a neighbor maybe and you're worried about, the first thing I would encourage the individual to speak to the patient and try to you know, encourage them to seek help 
whether from, I mean, it's from a psychiatrist or from the family doctor, or maybe from family, family members, uh, trying to encourage the patient to talk more about their issues, talk more about why they want to commit suicide, or what, what are the nature of these suicidal thoughts. And how important is faith, in your opinion, or within the uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, again, coping mechanisms for an individual suffering from mm -hmm. this? Faith and religion is definitely a, a, a protective factor against suicide and against mental health issues in general. So if someone is probably closely or, or deeply involved in his faith or his spiritual beliefs, these sometimes can be constituted, you know, seen as uh, protective factors. Uh, and they help a lot in the recovery of patients for, from suicidal issues or depression or other mental health problems. If there are any people out there right now watching who are suffering from suicidal thoughts and tendencies or who are experiencing extreme depression and are fearful of the fact that it could go down this avenue or road, what advice can you give to them, to those listening out there right now? Well, the first advice is to go and seek help. Seek help from professionals and also speak with your family member or speak with your friend or with your spouse. Tell, let them know that you are suffering with this specific issue and let the GP address the issue by whether maybe medications or talking therapy or referring the patient to a, a mental health professional or a psychiatrist or a psychologist to manage this issue. Well, there you have it. So we spoke to a sister who has suffered from suicidal tendencies. We've spoken to a brother who actually tried to take his life on several occasions, but at least we heard some hope within those stories as they have found coping mechanisms and there seems that there may be a brighter future for them. At the same time as that, we spoke to Sheikh Mizbahi, who showed us that there are scholars trying to tackle the issue of suicide and are doing so in a very progressive manner. And at least he squashed our concerns in light of some of the questions I was asking. At the same time as that, we spoke to a doctor who has shown us that there are points of access. There are ways in which we can help brothers and sisters actually treat this as a medical condition and not have the stigma that has surrounded this issue of suicide for so many years within our community. But we still need to do more. Yes, it's great that our mosques are moving forward, our communities are moving forward, and we have individuals who are showing us the way forward and are being beacons of light in that regard. However, we as individuals still need to do more. Every person can do something to help the brother or sister out there who may be suffering. Because all we need to do is be there for them. Lend them an ear. Listen to their worries. Listen to their fears, their anxieties. Don't judge them. Just be there for them. And in saying that, maybe, just maybe, we can at the very least reduce, if not eliminate completely, the issue of suicide and suicidal tendencies within individuals within the Muslim community.